Spoiler alert, it's not about the money. Elon Musk bought Twitter at $54.20 per share for a total of $44 billion. The story behind Elon Musk buying Twitter all started with one simple tweet. Free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. Do you believe Twitter rigorously adheres to this principle? In this Twitter poll, 70% of Elon's followers voted no. Underneath that same poll, Elon cryptically noted that the consequences of the poll would be important and that everyone should vote carefully. The very next day, Elon was asked if he would consider building a new social media platform, one that would consist of an open source algorithm where free speech and adhering to free speech is given top priority, one where propaganda is very minimal and I think that kind of platform is needed. To which Elon responded saying, I'm giving serious thought to this. But when you're a billionaire, you can literally afford not to start from scratch. It took Elon a couple of days to realize this, but I don't blame him. He currently owns Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and SolarCity. So spending the time to create a new social media platform from scratch just didn't seem like a good use of his time when he's trying to save the world. Elon's next move was to drop $2.4 billion on Twitter stock, which gave him 9% of ownership of the total company. That's four times the amount that the creator of Twitter, Jack Dorsey himself has. At the time, media outlets weren't sure if this was the start of a hostile takeover or if it was just an easy way to influence Twitter's decision making without going through the hassle of creating a new social media platform. That's the route I would have taken too. To me, Elon buying 9% of Twitter seemed like the cost to get his foot in the door to be able to influence Twitter rather than to run their business. Turns out, Twitter's boards of directors had something else in mind. Initially, they did offer Elon a seat on the board of directors after news broke that he bought 9% of Twitter stock. However, the day Elon was supposed to make his decision on whether or not he would join the board, we got this message from the CEO of Twitter and one of the board members. Elon Musk has decided not to join our board. I believe that this is for the best. There will be distractions ahead, but our goals and priorities remain unchanged. The decision we make and how we execute is in our hands, no one else's. Let's tune out the noise and stay focused on the work and what we're building. To me, this sounds like a politically correct way of the board telling Elon to screw off. There's no confirmation as to why joining the board broke down to this level, but I do have opinions on what probably happened behind the scenes. With my videos, I try to talk about the facts first and then give my opinions and thoughts at the end. So make sure you stick around if you're interested in how I feel about this whole situation. And if you are, smash the like button while you're at it. After declining to join the board, Elon Musk offered $43 billion to buy Twitter's offering $54 a share, even though Twitter was only worth $45 a share and the board of directors were not happy about this at all. Their solution, let's poison the stock. See, a poison pill is a defense tactic utilized by a target company to prevent or discourage hostile takeover attempts. Poison pills allow existing shareholders the right to purchase additional shares at a discount, effectively diluting the ownership interest of a new hostile party. In this case, Twitter's board of directors would allow existing stockholders to buy Twitter stocks for the low low, which would cause Elon to have to spend more money to have a controlling interest in the company. Elon's response to this, if they won't let you join them, separate them. Elon started calling out members of the board for not thinking about what's best for the normal shareholders. Elon pointed out that with Jack departing, the Twitter board collectively owns almost no shares. Objectively, their economic interests are simply not aligned with shareholders. Combined, the board of directors only own 77 shares out of the 800 million Twitter shares that exist. While that's pretty pathetic, does that logically matter? Turns out, it does. The data suggests that companies whose board members own a larger portion of any particular company usually outperform other companies with board members who don't own a lot of stock in that company. Personally, I can see why a person might be more financially motivated to make sure a company does well when they own more stocks in that company. Even the creator of Twitter has criticized the board members of Twitter agreeing that good boards don't create good companies, but a bad board will kill a company every single time. Big facts. Homies. While the Twitter board of directors may not have the shareholder's interest at the forefront, it is possible that they were trying to protect their employees. Twitter employees expressed concern that their workplace might suffer under the new leadership of Elon Musk. After all, a quick Google search of Tesla working conditions reveals that there's some employees who reported repetitive stress injuries linked to working long hours. In order to help quell employee concerns, the CEO had a company-wide meeting with his workforce of 7,500 full-time employees. 
He argued that one man could not change a culture and that it was up to the company to set strategy, not Elon Musk. And while he just took over as CEO in December, he ended up in the uncomfortable position of answering for employee criticism about Musk during the meeting. The meeting also covered Q&A ranging from how people of color are treated at Tesla and how the billionaires staunch support for free speech on social media, which leads to why Elon actually wants to buy Twitter. Spoiler alert, it's not about the money. Elon offered almost 20% of his entire net worth in order to buy Twitter. Technically, Elon Musk can't even afford to buy Twitter on his own, which is why he's taken out a loan for $25 billion to make the purchase. That's because cashing out on so many Tesla stocks all at once would actually tank the price of Tesla. For me, that alone dispels the notion that Elon's buying Twitter for money. There's no money in Twitter. In fact, Twitter hasn't been doing well financially for the last few quarters. In September of 2021, they posted a net income loss of $536 million. So why in the world would Elon want Twitter? Remember when I showed you the tweet of Elon saying free speech is essential to a functioning democracy? Yeah, that's the only explanation that's left. If you agree with me, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you don't agree with me, leave a comment below. I love hearing the perspectives of those who disagree with me. Facebook, Apple, Google. All of these companies are ran with profit in mind. These companies also go the extra mile to keep everything politically correct, which I do appreciate. But I do think that there should be one social media platform that can exist as a de facto town hall and Elon Musk even agrees with me. In a tweet, Elon says that he hopes that even his worst critics can remain on Twitter because that is what free speech means and Elon also believes that it's worth 20% of his net worth. Having a social media platform where people can go and have respectful conversations with people who agree and disagree is extremely important for the advancement of society. Sending yourself in a room full of people who only agree with you doesn't foster growth, and I believe most social media platforms who have an agenda hold back the growth of society. I'm not saying that Twitter should be the wild, wild west of the internet, but neither is Elon Musk. Free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy, and Twitter is the digital town hall where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. Elon further noted during a TED talk that Twitter or any other forum is obviously bound by the laws of the country that it operates in. So obviously there are some limitations on free speech in the US and of course Twitter. It won't be perfect, but I think we want it to really have the perception and reality that speech is as free as reasonably possible. I'm still a supporter of protecting people from hate speech, but I am also a supporter of being able to share opinions without being permanently banned. I think society needs to practice their ability to filter information and have access to various viewpoints that challenge their beliefs. And I think Twitter owned by Elon Musk will foster that ideology a lot better than any other social media platform that currently exists. So what are the positives and negatives of Elon Musk actually owning Twitter? Check out my next video to find out. Until then, peace.